is the paper airplane fold out uh, pattern drawing. Um, what I'm going to do is show a smaller version again, just so that I can fit it in the frame. And uh, but you'll be working with eight and a half by eleven, so actually my shape is also slightly different here. Um, for this first drawing, what we'll do is simply draw. We'll build our airplane, and then we'll fold it out. We'll flatten it, and then we'll simply draw the pattern. In a, uh, I think most of you probably want to do it uh, vertically. If for some reason your design is such that it will require to do it horizontally, that's okay, but I doubt it. But you know, in other words, maybe your, your fold out is like that. Uh, but most of you probably will be like this. And then what we'll do is we'll draw the lines that are the folds. And we'll use a simple uh, convention to draw so-called valley folds one way and mountain folds another way. And if you're familiar with origami, um, if it's a mountain, we'll do a straight line. If it's a valley, uh, we'll draw a dashed line. Mountain fold and valley fold. So this is uh, solid and this is dashed. And dashed. And I'll quickly show the little tool, which is a nifty tool called an eraser shield. Uh, what you can do with this is make a quick dashed line by uh, drawing a line and then erasing uh, the gaps by placing the part that has the, in this case, the little round holes over the line. I should say that I didn't grow up with this highly technologically advanced tool, so when I went to school we just had to, you know, do a dashed line by hand. Um, with some patience, but with this one, you can just go over like this, and you get a nifty little line that's dashed. Okay, um, so eraser shield. Okay, uh, uh, let's do a paper airplane. Fairly simple. I mean, my my design is like the classic one. I don't know if you have never done one. The way I do it is I just fold it in half. Again, bone folder, gray tool. And then I just do uh, progressive folds like this. I mean, you can also use your thumb, of course, your thumbnail. Wait a minute. Yeah. So I just keep folding. I think I'm doing this right. And then I keep folding. as a guide, um, then do the same thing. So essentially you're dis dissecting um, your angle three times. Thank you. 
to the foyer plate. Okay. Um, so that's the shape. I think in your case with eight and a half by eleven, this little bit here, this little tail part, won't be as uh, prominent because of the shape of your uh, paper, which is a little more square than mine. Uh, when it gets folded, it'll be it'll just be a little shorter there. Something like that. Okay. So in terms of the uh, folds, uh, because we're folding on top of folds, what happens is that something that's a valley becomes a mountain, you know, if you turn it too many times, right? So what we'll decide is that we'll just say that when, when it's folded out, back out, uh, we'll just pick and call. You can even mark them up a little bit with a little letter. So that you know, this would be a mount. I mean, if this is in front of me, right? And now I forget which way it was. Okay, so maybe you want to start with the top of your airplane facing you. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter as long as you pick a side, but let's just do it that way. So this would be my front or top of maybe top of wings. Yeah, this way. Okay, so if that's facing you, that's the first one is a valley, valley, mountain, mountain, valley, mountain. So I just marked them. Valley, mount sorry. Valley, mountain, mountain, valley, mountain. So in my drawing, then, I would draw it exactly the way um, I marked it. Uh, the drawing will be at half scale, uh, more or less centered. So that's an eight and a half by eleven, your, your uh, title block again. And just, you know, just figure it out, so if this is eight and a half by eleven, the original, uh, then I just half it, and so this will be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Um, so my first line is the mid going down the middle, so I'll do a valley. Uh, you left to measure this more or less, right, and, and half. Uh, we'll get into using a, a proportion, I mean a, an architect scale, but for now you can just take uh, one way to quickly see to get half of whatever you're measuring is to just fold that paper. So if this is your model, and let's say it's you know th two inches and one you know three eighths or whatever, and that's a paint to half. Uh, do the calculation. Just fold the paper. Just fold it like that. Okay, that's my half point. You can almost use that as your tape measure, as your as your measuring tool, and then in your drawing. You just say, okay, that's my half, so I just bring it there. Um, so in other words, you have to figure out where all these spots are, right? So that you can draw your lines. And this is, again, like the little blueprint of, we, of your airplane. Uh, so once you have determined all these spots, let's see, one, Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, depending it's, whether it's dashed or solid, you just draw it, and that will be it. Uh, so for this drawing, you can just say here, somewhere, uh, half scale or scale. Half inch equals one inch. Okay, let's see, two more mountains. Okay, and then it will be the same on the other side. Uh, 
Uh, so for this drawing, we'll use uh, tools. Uh, and by now, you should have your, uh, your triangles large enough so that you can get lines that are at least, you know, 8 inches, 10 inches. Again, I'm showing small ones so that you can see it. And by now, you should have really decided on what kind of drawing, uh, uh, drawing tool you want to use when, you, when you're going to use tools, meaning when you're going to use triangles. When you're doing sketching, you can really have a lot of different options, but for drafting, For drafting, you should really decide and go with it. If you're using a pencil, you really have to keep it sharp. It should be fairly hard. And, uh, and for keeping it sharp, not only you need to use a sharpener, but once in a while you really need to sharpen your point like this, because otherwise it will go dull pretty fast. If you're using this type of mechanical pencil, which again is my favorite, my, I prefer this one, um, then you need to get also a little gadget that will sharpen it for you, which is this little device. Uh, it's blue, I think, the one they sell at the bookstore. You get the lead out, the graphite out, a certain amount. You sharpen it. You clean it. And now again, I mean, it's a little unfair comparison because this is a point, uh, I think it's a point five. Okay. So once again, that's, that's a little thick one. This one is, uh, uh, what is it? Yeah, it's point nine. So you could use point three or point, point three or point five, maybe point seven. But regardless, even if this was point three, which is pretty thin, it would be hard to match, you know, this guy, uh, sharpness and precision. In fact, it's a little blunt, if you look at that. So let's see if we can get really sharp. Uh, the idea, of course, is that, I mean, you can't be perfect. That doesn't exist, right, unless you have like a, a cyclotron and you want to split the atoms. Uh, but you can try to be as close as possible so that you minimize your um, differences when you start uh, you know, doing things that are fairly precise. I can even sharpen that. I can even sharpen that a little further. Now we can compare them again, and you can see it's getting better and better. Uh, okay. With this type. With this type, uh, you just draw pretty much. I mean, you just draw a straight line. With this type, you kind of roll and you turn the pencil so that your, that your point stays sharp as long as possible. So again, you, you draw this way. You just turn. Can you see how I'm doing that? You just turn the pencil and you rotate it. Um, I won't go through the whole drawing, but just a quick, a few tips about using the tools. Um, so the main trick with these guys is that you always use them together and, and rarely use them by itself. By that, what I mean is, let's say you want to draw a square. I mean, you have the method that we just learned, but it's not really a right way to do a square. For example, you start with a segment that's one inch, and then to do the rest, you say, oh, okay, I'm gonna measure now, you know, one inch off on the left side, one inch off on the right side. I'm gonna connect that. And now, now, how do I do a square? Now, you could take the ruler and say, oh, I'm just gonna line it up. Ah, it's not really a good system. Because you always got, you're bound to have like little differences. Okay, so that's that's the wrong way. So the right way is to start with a nice line. Uh, pick your measurement, usually not at the edge, because again, that's hard to know where it exactly is. But if you pick it in the middle somewhere, uh, I'm exaggerating my dots again because I want you to see them. But, um, then, to draw the size of the square, what I want to do is line up 
my first triangle here. And then I place the second triangle against it and I move these along. And you see now I'm not going to have enough. So that's a little bit of a problem. So I'm going to move and I'm going to measure again. I'm going to use the inside because I can't see the top here since I can't look on there. Um, and that of course is assuming <laughs> that my triangle is nice and this edge is perfectly parallel, which is not a sure thing. Anyway, let's assume now if it's straight, then set my second triangle and move it up and down like this. Okay. And what I do is, first of all, with, my, with this hand I'm holding the paper and the triangle at the same time so it doesn't slip. With the second triangle I'm sliding it against the first triangle and when I get to the point where it's correct, I want to lock it by using my hand to press on both triangles. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Now I could measure these two sides again, but a better way is actually to use your 45 degree triangle to get a diagonal from there to there. And I almost missed there, but just made it. So that gives me a, a nice straight construction. So now I take the original line again and I set it up, place my left triangle, hold it. Again, I, I touch the paper and the triangle at the same time. And then as I slide it, I move one finger to lock the other triangle when I know it's in the right spot. Okay, so now it's free to move, but as soon as it's right where I want it, then I move my finger and I lock it so it doesn't move. And that's when I do my other line. Okay, so that's, uh, that's just a quick way to use the triangles. Um, of course, for some things, you know, um, you might need to measure. You know, maybe if you're doing your border, you might measure, you know, half inch, half inch, and then draw your line. Uh, by the way, there is T-squares in behind the, um, one of the boards near the door. And I want you to use them because it's gonna, things are going to be faster, okay? I used the example of, you know, if you were to build a house and you were given a cement mixer and all of a sudden, you know, you have no power and you're, and you're stuck, you're not going to go back to, like, using your hands to mix cement. You're probably still going to use, you know, a shovel, right? It's going to be faster than using your hands. Right? Um, if you have to, you know, kind of go from a cement mixer, right? That's what the cement pours out. Uh, so I know it's really old fashioned, old school, um, retro, whatever you want to call it, but since we do not have, ideally, we should have uh, made lines. You know, which is this beautiful tool that's a straight edge that goes parallel up and down. Uh, and if, if you have a little money, you should get one for yourself for, for the house. Um, and so this moves up and down. It's always parallel perfectly. Um, and then you use, you know, the other two triangles in conjunction with that. This tool, believe it or not, it's actually more precise than if you have seen this old uh, mechanical arm thing, really a throwback to the old days of drafting. Uh, even though this is much faster, you can move this, uh, you know, around at different preset angles. Sooner or later, this arm is going to get out of whack. Whereas with this one, you're always going to really get a nice straight horizontal line. Okay, um, I think I'll stop here and I will help you with your constructions that are due today if you need, um, if you need help with those.